Okay, guys. So today I'm going to react to Chael Sonnen's video, PEDs and MMA in 2022. And what's interesting here is Chael and I have a mutual friend in Scott Davenport. So Scott and I text just about every day. And Scott and I did a bunch of podcasts together. And actually, Scott did a podcast with Chael, and I wasn't able to, to make it that day. But that was like, I think, a year ago, roughly. So the interesting thing is, well, this is funny. This is a funny story. So I had Chael Sonnen, Chael Sonnen's number, but I promised I wouldn't like use it or, you know, do anything because I was providing Chael Sonnen's number, phone number to Derek from More Place, More Dates. So I was like the guy relaying Chael's number to Derek, but it's kind of funny because I got it from Scott and I, I don't have any more anything. I promised I would like delete it. I don't want to harass the guy. You know, I respect him and everything, but it's kind of funny, small world. But I haven't watched the video yet. I'm going to see what he has to say. And if you guys like the content, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for the sake of the algorithm. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys. Can't get back to everybody in the comments, but I do my best. And uh, just thanks for watching. So let's see here what he says. I have not watched any of this yet, by the way. Heads in MMA. This is a question that I never stop getting asked, and I'm fine with that. I do not mind if you come to me. And I do not mind speaking about it extremely candidly. But it is one of these topics where we know our own. If you want to have what's going to be deemed an expert in the world of performance enhancers, you're going to get somebody that took a level of science classes and mixed that with some biology and majored in chemistry. And then he's going to use words that confuse everybody else in the room as a way of getting himself nominated the smart guy. He's going to talk about nano. <laughs> that's kind of funny because that's one way to do it. Like, how do you appear like an expert? Use big words, confuse everybody. Like if, if I talk to you guys and you don't understand half of what I'm saying, you may just make the assumption that I know what I'm talking about. Because, you know, that's one of the things I try not to get too like sciencey on you guys, because a lot of people can't relate to it. A lot of people can't understand it. So I think we often confuse big words with knowledge and such like that. So that's kind of funny that he said that. Picograms, he's going to talk about picograms. He's going to talk about CCs. He's going to break the whole thing down. I mean, <laughs> even if somebody keeps up with him, then he's going to go to a whole nother word such as acid. He's going to do whatever it takes. He will mention hemoglobin. He's going to talk about hematocrit. <laughs> he can do whatever it takes and just keep on using weird words until somebody <laughs> can't keep up, and he will then be deemed the smartest guy in the room. Now, that's funny. There is a truth to that, but I will share with you. No, honestly, I don't think like hemoglobin and hematocrit is that complicated. That's kind of like basic level blood work stuff. But that's funny though, because I, I get where he's going with this. I think it's hilarious because it's accurate. But yeah. Pretty much agree. That's funny. 100% of the time, not maybe. Use Usada, by example. Very good, not 100%. 100% of the time, Shale's eye test will be right. Not, not. <laughs> That's funny, too. Yeah, because Chael's used PEDs, guys. Like, Chael knows what he's looking at. I've used PEDs. I used them for nine years. So when I see these guys like Liver King, who are the biggest phonies in the industry, and it's my own problem is almost like I get the people who are fake naturals, but when you egregiously deny it over and over repeatedly in the face of all the evidence, that's the people who really suck. So like Liver King just denying it constantly, even though it's like obvious. And he goes, guys, you know, look at my legs. They're so freaking small. Like when my, my legs would be bigger. It's like, bro, you just don't train legs. That's why your legs are small and you don't have the genetics for a big quad sweep. So it's really the, I have more of a problem with people who are not only fake naturals, but they just egregiously lie to you in the face of the obvious. So some of these people just stay quiet or and they don't really talk about it I and mean, they're still fake naturals. But some of these people just ham it up like liver king. So he's pretty much terrible. Maybe. I assume that other people in the know had the same skill that I did now. Other users do. We all know our own. And you guys might be able to relate to that. I grew up in Oregon. Apparently, we're known for marijuana in Oregon. I have never touched, my hand has never touched marijuana. In my entire life, going through college, people come in from out of town. Oregon's this big pot state. They see me. 
you know, Oregon is really most known for like the mean streets of West Lynn. So West Lynn is a very dangerous community in Oregon. Um, really rough neighborhood. If you grow up there, you know what I'm talking about. And that's really what they're most known for. So very dangerous. Um, that's where a lot of gangsters come out of. So some of the, the world's most dangerous gangsters come out of West Lynn. It's just, it's a rough, it's a rough city, but you guys, if you look it up, if you'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about. In my entire life, do you want to know how many times I have been asked for marijuana by anybody ever? None. Do you know how many times I have been invited to come out back behind the barn and smoke a joint with somebody in my entire life? Do you want to know how many times that's ever happened to me? None. The same way as I tell you. Head users know our own. That might be something that you could easier relate to. Two people have, 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 have never had to meet. Ever, ever. They see each other. Okay, I'm a pot guy. He's. That's exactly right, dude. I could go to Gold's Gym in town. And I'm like, that guy's on steroids. That guy's on steroids. That guy's on steroids. Like, it's so freaking obvious. You know what's really funny? When you see the guys lifting, like, lightweight and they're just jacked out of their minds, you're like, yeah, he's definitely on steroids. He doesn't even lift heavy. And he still looks freaking amazing veins popping out the huge traps the giant neck i mean come on y'all we know what we're looking at so he's right i wonder what chael's favorite steroid is mine's anavar i wonder what he would say pot guy let's go link up see if he's got a joint i'll go smoke it with him i gotta lie it happens all the time and i only share that with you is you could have somebody that's really good at science and knows how to look at those assays and can break it down and get in front of a boardroom and put on a nice suit and then confuse absolutely everybody in the room and get somebody convicted for pets like you could do that but you can also have announcers in the fight game, and you can have judges, and you can have referees. You can have all of these people that can do those things, or you could just put somebody in there that's done it. We would all see the value in that. So I used to be of the mind that the people in the Nolan doing the testing had the same skill as I had. Now, what they're up against is catching somebody. That's the entire cat and mouse. That's the entire game. But I'm now realizing they don't have that same skill. I've heard many of them speak. Many of, on, on the highest, I've heard them speak. I've heard them attempt to clear somebody that they've already tested positive. That actually happened. A board member went on a public show and said, man, I think this guy said, I know we've got the test. I know it says that he's guilty. But I don't think he is. And I remember just being dumbfounded. Oh, my God, do, do you need the test? Isn't the whole reason you tested him because you looked at him and you saw his delts, his upper abs, and his nipples. Isn't, isn't that why we did this in the very first place? No, apparently not. And when it comes to PEDS and MMA, I will tell you the sport is so clean. It really is so clean. Now, it's not perfect. It's a game. It's a game with a flawed psychology by the user of which I used to be, which is, if it's not on the banned list, then it's not banned. There is a technicality to that rule, there really is. Like if you get a chemist that could change one strand and create something new of which has not been identified by anybody and was not put in the bailout, like right, you, you, you see where this gets really interesting. So the guys that are using, the guys that are failing the drug test, they are known that you've got to catch them. And there's a number of things about the agreements that is not the way that's advertised to you guys. The first thing that you will need to know is what they are using. The second thing that you will need to know, you will have no idea why I'm bringing this up unless you're in the know, is how they're using it. That is going to loop. So I think he just means how they're using it in terms of like how they're cycling it, what they're doing as far as micro dosing, how soon before the, the MMA fight they would stop taking it. Obviously, those are kind of the things he's, he's getting at here. Cause you got to look at the half-life of certain compounds how quickly are they out of the system and one of the things that like you know i don't think they have this advanced level of working around the system and powerlifting because there's just not as much at stake as like in M mma where it's millions of dollars but in powerlifting there's wada and wada is not as strict as usada and wada you know they're not doing randomized drug testing all the time out of competition i think ssj bob just said that he got tested out of competition they showed up at his gym but most of these guys aren't getting drug tested at all out of competition so that does lead to some uh doubting as far as the general public what we think of who's natural and who's not most of you but the ones that it didn't know what i mean once you figure those things out you will then get to the third and least important thing about which is when now 
when you watch people playing this game, and when I went down on this, I ended up getting hired by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Now, hired is because I don't know a better word to use. It was part of my disciplinary action. But my phone rang a lot. And not only did I answer all of those calls, I made a bunch of them. I made a bunch of them to a lot of buddies. And I said, stop. They're coming. They're going to get you. I know what you were told. I know what you think. It's better and it's different now. Stop. Of those people, not one of them caught, three of them ended up going down. Not one of, not one of them stopped. It's one of those things they thought that they had to be. Now, here's what influenced me. It wasn't losing my license. It wasn't getting suspended. It wasn't. The sport, where I was at, team and people I around, this was part of it. You're going to run on this day. You're going to box on this day. You're going to lift on this. Go see the doctor on this day. It was part of it. Dana took the bully pulpit. He goes up there with Lorenzo. He goes up there with Travis Taggart. It was the day that they announced that they were bringing new soda. Somebody asked a question that had to do with baseball. Somehow baseball got brought up, used and steroids within baseball. And Dana said, no, it's a guy hitting a ball with a stick. This is combat where somebody could hurt or kill somebody by doing something secretively that's against the rules. So it changed me. Right there. That was the moment. Oh, my goodness. Got to look at the man. In the you know, one of the sad things, though, about MMA is – Seeing like Alistair Overeem and Vitor Belfort go from these jacked specimens who just looked like killers. Like before you even saw them fight, when you saw them at weigh-ins, you were like, holy cats, like this guy means business, just jacked. And then watching them go to like their softer physiques when they had to come off everything because you saw it, I got implemented. So like seeing the new Overeem and the new Belfort and they weren't world beaters anymore and they looked soft and didn't have the the – the shape they used to and everything and the size and the imposing figure like that was sad, man. Like these guys were beasts. And now we, we don't have that. We only, the only guy like that really is Paulo Costa is one of the main ones, Kamaro Usman, some of these guys, but Paulo Costa, I wonder, like as far as the eye test does not look natty. The mayor, whoa, whoa, I got this all wrong. It was just one of those things, but until you have that revelation, you don't have that revelation. So guys continue to play this game. And guys that are in violation of the eye test but have yet to been caught because there's yet to be an assay out, which all has to do with the time because they've yet to figure out the administration purposes before they can ultimately get to the substances. They all keep their mouth shut. Now, I got to go too. I know. I know 100% of the time. The same way as nobody has ever said the word marijuana to me because they knew not to. I know 100% of the time. They're very quiet. I could use another comparison. Very smart person. Neil deGrasse Tyson has maintained that the United States did in fact land on the moon, not because as a scientist he had any kind of scientific proof. He maintained that if you were to fake that, in a studio in Santa Monica, it would have taken roughly 40 to 70 people, and they could not have kept their mouth shut. And you know what? He's right. He's completely right. That is the single greatest evidence that we know that that did, in fact, happen. But the same thing. You know, I never thought about it like that. Hmm. Because people are not going to keep their mouth shut when they know stuff. We know how that is. That's human nature. You're not going to stay quiet when you know stuff. Most people are not. It comes down to this. We know about the social scientists that people can't keep their mouth shut. And it takes a number of people to pull one of these things off. So is it possible? We got two gyms. It is not the old expression of everybody there does it. Back when people would say that, that was a way of getting out of something. But it was never true. It was never everybody does it. It was just meant as a broad stroke. And you could speak that way because the vast majority. We have two gyms. It's 100%. There is nobody signed to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, Bellator, or the Professional Fight League that is not in gross violation. Nobody ever says anything. How come? Is it possible? Is it possible to keep a secret to that level? To play the game, to run all the tests, to never get hit because you somehow come across a substance, a form of administration at a time that matches up and clears the test. Maybe, sure. Generally, 
probably the most likely and easiest scenario is the right one. But there is something else to be looked at. When those guys come out, they're doing the sign of the cross. They're thanking everybody. They're halfway killing an opponent. They're taking all the money and moving on with the rankings. How are they doing that and still sleeping at night? Well, there is another possibility, which is... Ah, well, he left us hanging there. I don't know, but, you know, I will say it's like the NBA and NFL, really. No one gets busted for PEDs. And you go, oh, DeAndre Hopkins got busted, but one guy. There's always, like, a scapegoat, like Brian Cushing. And then I see guys like Miles Garrett and uh, Danielle Hunter and some of these guys, and I'm just like, they're so jacked. Like, is it natural? I don't know. It's hard to say, but... It's, I find it hard to believe that, like, one guy a year gets popped in the NFL for PEDs, knowing what they put their bodies through. No one ever – have you ever thought about this? No one ever gets popped in college football. Never. In fact, when they were trying to get me to try out for the University of Wisconsin football team, I said, hey, I'm on, like, trend and stuff. How's that going to work? They literally told me, don't worry about it. They said, don't worry about it. So it, it makes a lot of sense, though, when you look at, like, no one in college football ever gets busted for PEDs. And then NBA, nobody ever gets busted, same thing. And you see some of these guys, and you have to wonder, because basketball, you know, you're going to be burning calories 24-7, running up and down the court. How are these guys looking? You know, some of them look pretty jacked. So it's just food for thought. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for the sake of the algorithm. I'll keep it coming for you. I appreciate y'all.